finished, just finished my fourth Broadway show, thank you God, um, <laughs> in New York at the Richard Rogers Theater, Cyrano de Bergerac, with um, Kevin Klein as Cyrano, Jennifer Garner as Roxanne, and I worked with uh, Carmen La Civita, or La Civita, and he played Valver. Carmen and I just became friends, you know, and then he called me um, in Los Angeles and asked if I would be interested in doing a staged reading, and I said, sure, anytime. So here I am doing Virginia Woolf. No, 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 it's not about the nose. It's about a room of one's own. It's about uh, Virginia Woolf, the great, great mind. I mean, from 1928 till now, all the women that had ever thought of writing poetry or prose or philosophy, you know, uh, or fiction, um, she gave them the courage you know, to, to, st to, to, f to stand the course, to stay the course, to follow your dream, to never give up, um, uh, to keep the muse alive. I'm now just finishing up uh, Virginia Woolf's biography by her nephew, Quentin Bell. So um, and that's fascinating. It's one of the best biographies I think I've ever read of anyone because you not only get um, the outside of Virginia, but the inside, the internal uh, Virginia Woolf, the turmoil, what mm. she went through, you know, uh, how she lived life, how she was frightened of life, how she uh, combated life and met it on her terms. That encapsulates really the woman herself, the writer, the woman, um, the mad woman. A dead mother on Providence, and I don't smoke. I always tell people I do not smoke. That uh, that was an herbal cigarette, and that it was written by John Macius, who had that in the character because, of course, she smoked four packs of cigarettes a day and then just you know dropped dead in that <laughs> at her daughter's wedding. Um, and then that whole gimmick of bringing her back was such a brilliant idea. It was the 80s, actually it was um, uh, right at the time that the outbreak came in San Francisco and I created the role of uh, Dr. Bruckner. It was an extraordinary production, um, extraordinary experience, you know, it was at the moment, it was timely, because As Is was on Broadway and we were at the Public Theater with um, uh, Mr. Mr. Joe Papp. I could never really call him Joe. A lot of people called him Joe. I, it was always Mr. Papp to me. And I did four shows for Mr. Papp. And The Normal Heart was the, the, um, the last show I did with Brad Davis. And um, Larry Kramer absolutely worked every day with Larry Kramer and uh, worked on that script, which initially was four hours long. At, at a personal level, he was a very type A intense personality. You know, He was a very committed writer. Um, uh, very committed to, uh, to, to the cause, you know, and very angry, you know, about uh, being set aside, you know, as Virginia Woolf was, you know, there really was no difference, you know, um, uh, just being set aside and not being considered, not being respected, you know, for, um, for who she was or uh, who women were or uh, the, the, the gay rights cause, the lesbian cause. Um, and no respect in that regard. And he was very angry um, that they wanted a voice. They needed their voice to be heard. I played the little boy Edward in the first act and Victoria, uh, the lesbian uh, wife in the second. And Tommy Toon directed, of course it was written by Carol Churchill, the great British writer. And she came to New York to rehearse with Tommy, Tommy Toon and ourselves, the, and the entire British cast. But that was an unbelievable experience because, you know, cross-dressing in 1982, this was groundbreaking, as was the normal heart, you know, so I was very grateful. I just love what I do, but I was very grateful to be in two of these um, really um, life-enhancing, I would like to think, but so many people have told me they, uh, that they were enhanced and moved, and um, that their life changed. It was a life-changing experience for them.
I didn't think with the blonde hair, which I did as Linda Hansen, I didn't think that was right for Virginia Woolf, so um, I'm now a brunette, but actresses do that all the time, you know.